In early breast cancers, when the lump is small, uh, the first step is usually surgery. Uh, one has to remove the, the lump totally, and one has to get to, to take out some of the lymph nodes in the armpit for examination. Let's deal with the breast lump first. There are two options as far as surgery is concerned. One is to only remove the lump with a rim of the normal tissue. And this procedure we call wide excision or lumpectomy, depending on how much is taken out. In this way, you can spare the patient a mastectomy. This is possible usually when the lump is small and is not directly behind the nipple. And on ultrasound and mammogram, there's only one abnormality that we find. On the other hand, if the mass is too big, if it's directly behind the nipple, and it is multiple, you can see multiple abnormalities, either microcalcifications or shadows that we are not certain and happy about. In those cases, a mastectomy may be necessary. Breast cancer is not only treated with surgery. In fact, breast cancer is a, it, it exemplifies um, the principles of multidisciplinary treatment for cancer. Breast cancer uh, is characterized by its ability to spread or systemic involvement involving other organs, other parts of the body. And this can happen even the cancer is small. Right? So the treatment for breast cancer will have various components. Some to address the tumour locally, such as surgery and radiotherapy. And you have systemic treatment to address other involvement in the rest of the body. Systemic treatment are like chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, antibody treatment, and, um, and are some of the newer targeted treatments. We talked about surgery a while ago and removing the, the tumour either by a lumpectomy or a mastectomy and examining the X-ray lymph node is often the first step. After we have gotten the information from the tumour and the X-ray lymph node, we can then make a judgement as to what is the risk of the tumour recurring in the future. Generally speaking, the larger the tumour, the more the lymph nodes are affected, the higher will be the risk. As a rule, any tumour that is one, more than one centimetre or if the lymph nodes are affected, they are usually candidate for further treatment known as adjuvant treatment. And they are chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, or more recently, a monoclonal antibody known as Herceptin. And together with all these treatments, that we can offer the patient the best long-term outcome. The good news is, for HER2 positive cancers, there's actually a drug that's very specific for this disease, known as Herceptin, or the, the other name for it is Trastuzumab. Herceptin is a monoclonal antibody that binds to the receptor and in so doing can trigger off a series of events that leads to cell death. Herceptin has been used in advanced cancer and has been shown to prolong survival. Now Herceptin has moved into early cancers. We will apply Herceptin to patients with stage 1 or 2 uh, breast cancer which are HER2 positive after they have finished their chemotherapy you are able to further reduce the risk of recurrence over and above what chemotherapy has done and prolong their survival as a result. In fact, this has been said to be one of the most significant advancements in the treatment of breast cancer in the last 20 years. There's another monoclonal antibody and this time and this molecule targets um, a specific protein that's responsible for forming new blood vessels for the tumour. As you can imagine, a tumour needs nutrients to grow and therefore it needs blood vessels to feed the tumour. And the, the tumour has a way of attracting uh, blood vessels towards it and by secrete, this is done so by making a certain substance. Avastin or bevacizumab is a monoclonal antibody that targets the substance. It neutralizes the substance that attract blood vessel growth. As a result, the tumor cannot grow to as large an extent. In fact,
by applying her uh, Avastin, there's regression of the tumour. By adding Avastin to the standard chemotherapy in the advanced breast cancer, we are seeing a higher chance of tumour shrinking. We are seeing a longer duration of control. So this is the other area of advancement that is very exciting. There are certain things that one can do to minimize the risk. Some of these, or in fact most of these, are lifestyle factors. For example, I think if one were to, um, to be very conscious about the fat consumption and go for a lower fat diet, exercise regularly, exercise regularly, do not smoke and don't drink excessively. These are the things in, in our lifestyle that what we can do to modify our risk of breast cancer. In fact, it's not just breast cancer, but many other cancers as well. Um, well, you know, if one could have a family early, have the first child or first pregnancy before age 30, it does protect as well. And when the child is born, let's make it a point to breastfeed the baby. It's good both for the mother as well as for the baby. There are certain risks that we can't change. We can't change our genetic risk. We can't change who our mother is. We can't change the fact that our sister had breast cancer. But lifestyle factors, lifestyle changes uh, can go a long way in modifying our risk for breast cancer. Of course, uh, this is not all that one can do. If one cannot prevent it completely, one will try to discover it as early as possible. The earlier we can detect it, the higher the chance of cure.